Hey kids, time for Euler's method. Yes, it's Euler, not Euler. Or Euler, like a like an oil can or whatever. So Euler's method, um, similar to Newton's method, only in that they're named after math, famous mathematicians, and they're an algorithmic iterative process, which means this is a repeated recipe that you need to follow over and over and over again. And its goal, Newton's method goal, was to use that method to approximate x-intercepts. The goal of Euler's method is to approximate a solution to a differential equation. Remember, a solution to a differential equation means given y prime, the solution to this differential equation is y equals blah, 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 plus c. That's the general given an initial condition. You can solve for c. So for example, let's pretend I had a derivative that was quadratic. What did it come from? It came from some cubic, right? If your derivative is quadratic, it came from a cubic. And if my family of function is cubic, right, just differing by a shift. If I give you an, a point on here, you can give me the particular solution. So with Euler's method, Euler's method is a way to, instead of getting the solution, what if I can't get, I can't somehow solve, I can't get y by itself. You, Euler's method is using the given derivative. and an initial condition or a point on the curve, original curve. Get me some points that are close. So if my red graph is actually my solution, Euler's method will come up with this point. They'll share this point. But maybe the point over here will be off a little bit. And the point down here will be off a little bit and the point here will be off a little bit, and the point here will be off a little bit. And further, it's gonna look linear in between each one of those. So not great. Euler's method is not great, but it is still a method that you are tested on to generate points. When you're done with Euler's method, you will generate however many points that are close to the original function without having to solve a differential equation. You're going to use Euler's method instead of solving. So approximate a solution means get some points that are approximately on your original. So look at this differential equation. You do not know how to solve that differential equation. I will teach you in the course called differential equations how to deal with that. But right now, and in BC, you do not know how to solve that. It's not separable. Separable needs a product. You have no idea. You know you have y's on the wrong side, but you can't separate that because you'd have y plus the derivative. You don't know how to deal with that. So, I'm not, we're not going to do this, but we will learn a method for approximating this, and then we'll come back to this. Approximating a solution where I'll just get you a list of points. I don't know what y looks like, but Euler will give you will give us a list of points that are approximately on y. So a little historical moment. It's not the greatest picture of poor Leonard, poor Leonard, right? But he was phenomenal. 
He really was. All the notation that we take for granted all came from him. Before the 1700s, no one used this symbol for pi. We knew what pi was, right? It was, right, the ratio of any circle circle's diameter to its, to its uh, circumference. But Euler was like, meh. I think I'm tired of writing 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. I think I'm just going to use my favorite Greek letter pi. And everybody said, okay. Right? So f of x notation, that's Leonard. He came up with that. And he, right, much like right, famous mu musician Beethoven, Beethoven did so much of his greatest work after he was blind. Right? So did Leonard. Pretty cool. Nice quote from Laplace. And Laplace transformations is something we will deal with in differential equations. All right. It is just a linear approximation, which means Euler's method uses the tangent line, something we did first semester. Remember, the equation of any tangent line looks like this. Where the slope goes here, but you get the slope from the derivative, and this is your point of tangency. Right? That's the equation of the tangent line. Now we can make it look fancy. Remember when we called it the linearization? And we said, well, we're going to take this tangent line and we're going to write it as y equals, um, we're going to take this value and add it. So add it to both sides. And remember, that was the function value plus the derivative evaluated at the point of tangency. Right? If you don't remember that, go back to first semester and look at your notes. You wrote equations, and then we learned how to call this moment. Well, let's call this L of X, right? Yeah, whatever. But I want you to focus on, and of course, I don't care whether you have this Y1 here or here. It doesn't matter. So that's what I just wrote. The linearization, I called this Y1. Call it the Y original, right? This is the point of tangency. X sub zero Y or X sub O Y sub O means on the O for on the original, a point on the original. Get it? There's my O and my O. This is just a way of saying the slope, which is the derivative. You get the slope by finding the derivative of Y and plugging in the point of tangency. Most of our derivatives have just been in terms of x, so you've only needed the x-coordinate. So if I want to use the linearization to approximate, I take this x value, right, the point of tangency, I leave that there, I leave the y point of tangency, but in for x, I plug in some x value close to the point of tangency. So let's draw this. Let's again, pretend I have some random cubic that is my original function. My original function is a cubic, which means its derivative was a, was a quadratic, right? And let's say I have some point here. Let's pretend that point is negative 2, comma 5. Right? The derivative is a quadratic. The linearization, how I find the equation of the linearization, the only thing I need for the linearization equation is the y value 5 plus the derivative times x minus negative 2, which of course turns into x plus 2, right? That's the linearization equation. And all that I'm missing is the derivative, how I get the slope. Now, let's suppose, though, that I want you to use the linearization and approximate, instead of negative 2, how about negative 1.5? Negative 1.5 is right there on the actual, but I can use the linearization function and plug in negative 1.5 there. 
right? This is first semester. If you want to estimate the value of the function when x changes by just a little, you have the new x, negative 1.5, minus the x on the original, which was negative 2. Negative 1.5 plus 2 is 0.5, which is your change in x. When you make your change in x super small, we call it delta x instead of delta x. Got it? So look at my linearization equation. y1 of x, right, from the linearization equation, the linearization of x is equal to the actual y value at x by using the linearization equation where you have the original y, plus the slope evaluated at your point of tangency times that little change in x, right? The x that you want minus the original x you were given. That's what that says. So you use the linearization equation to approximate that actual point. But notice what happens. B by and I can actually just say, oh, all you need is y sub 0 plus the change in y. Whoa, that's kind of cool. And then I can just keep doing this. This gets me a new point. It gets me an x and a y that is not on the original, but it is close to an original point on y, right? And you can get better and better approximations by getting closer and closer to your point of tangency. And we just repeat that over and over and over again. Mm, I didn't mean all this to come up at once. <laughs> I meant for this to come in one by one, but Copy this down. Use Euler's method to approximate the value of on an original of 1.5 using three step sizes. So get used to that notation of delta x being 0.5. What that means is they gave me y sub 0 is equal to 1. They want me to use Euler three times changing x by 0.5. Okay, so here was a point on the original. Use Euler's method by saying the actual point on the curve I don't see, whose derivative is this, this is how I get the slope, slope on original that I can't see. I only know how to generate slopes and I'm given an initial condition. This is my only fact. The rest of these are fiction. They are not on your actual curve, but if you do Euler's method correctly and with smaller and smaller step sizes, this time they told us actually 0.5 is actually kind of big, so I don't expect a great approximation. So look at what I've done. I tried to color code everything here. My slope generator is in green. So look at all the green values. Every one of these green values came from using my slope. So, using the point zero, 1, I use my linearization equation. y sub 0 is 1. That's my original y. Then I went and got from my slope, I plugged in 0, 1 to my slope. So go up here and plug in 0 for x and 1 for y, and you get a slope of 0. And then I multiplied by dx.
right? Slope times dx. When I evaluated that, I got 1. This is my new fiction y. So Euler predicts that this is the actual x sub 1, y sub 1 is approximately, I should write approximately, 0.5, that was the x value that I started with. I mean, you know, right? 0.5 comma 1. So I'm going to plug in fiction. When x is point moved from 0, a distance of 0.5, Euler predicts the y value will be 1. Now pretend this is fact and repeat. This is not fact, but pretend it's fact and get the next fiction. So notice the original y. Now at, I took 0.5 and I changed to 1.0 is old y, 1, plus slope. Where do I go for my slope? Up here. 10 times 0.5, right? 10 times a half. 5 times 1 is 5. That's where this number came from. And then delta x is always 0.5, because that's what my delta x is. Did that computation, and I got a new y. When x was 1, right, changing from 0.5 to 1, my new y was 3 and a half. Lather, rinse, and repeat. This is my new point. Change my 0.5. Oops, I shouldn't go over there. Change 1.0 by 0.5. Y2 is 3.5, slope, go up here to your slope generator, plug in 1 and 3.5, 10 times 1 is 10, 10 plus times 3.5 is 35, that's where this value came from, and my delta x is 0.5. I did that value and I got 21, and I got a third point. So notice that I used three steps. Here's my original. And in addition to my fact, I got three fiction values. So remember, I was given a slope generator and an initial condition. But this is actually a differential equation I can solve. Unlike that one that I first showed you where dy dx was equal to x minus y, this is separable, right? It's separable. I know how to do this. I divide both sides by y, so I get dy dx, y to the negative 1 is equal to 10x. I anti-differentiate both sides with respect to x, and I get ln of y is equal to 5x squared plus c. They want me to plug in 0 and 1, so I get ln of 1, which is 0, c is 0, so I have ln of y is equal to 5x squared, raise both sides e to the, and y is equal to e to the 5x squared. So I didn't need Euler. I can see the original. This is the original. So look at the graph. This is the black graph is the graph of e to the 5x squared, right? Slide swoosh. 
notice that in blue, I have Euler's approximation. Remember, the initial condition, 0, 1, and then with delta x of 0.5, I got my fiction. One step, two step, three steps. There's the four points I plotted. And then I don't know the curvature or using Euler, so I can only connect them with straight lines. And that is not a very good representation, but it is a representation, right? I do kind of see, right, that if you kept going, and you know what, how would you get better? You know how you'd get better? Make delta x not 0.5. What if you made delta x equal to 0.005? This is an iterative process. This is very easy to program. Just look, just Google it, right? Google Desmos, GeoGebra, they've all got great programs for this. AP is not going to test you with your calculator on this. You're going to have to do a couple of steps like this without a calculator. So you hope the numbers are nice, and they, and they generally will be, right? If you're, and you're not going to have to do too many steps. So let's do another example. All right, this time, I want you to, this is even simpler, right? Look at this differential equation. Y prime is equal to 2x. Hello, Euler, I don't need you. I mean, you're all fancy and whatnot, but I don't need you. The goal here is not actually to use Euler's method for real, to actually approximate something I can't solve. The goal is to show you the connection between what Euler's method gives you and what the actual solution gives you. Now, I'm going to organize this in a different fashion. I'm going to organize, sometimes some students really like an AP recognizes doing this with a table, right? Making your own table. So here's the linearization, right? This is, and I kind of use this uh, book notation. The next Y value you get is equal to the previous Y plus the derivative evaluated at the previous point. times delta x. So I'm going to make a chart using that notation. And I'm going to fill in my fact. These two columns are going to represent the points on y, my original, right? I only, the information I have of y is only its slope right now. So let's start filling this in. If my original fact is 0, 1, what is the derivative at 0, 1? Now nicely your derivative only depends upon x, so who cares what y is? And I'm going to plot these points over here on my chart. So there's 0, 1. The derivative plugging in 0 for x, my derivative is x. Now what's dy? What is the change in y? Just multiply by 0.5 and you get dy, right? Multiply times dx. Take the slope, multiply it times dx, which is 0.5. Of course, that's going to be 0. Y sub, your next Y is your old Y plus your change in Y. Add those together and you get your next Y. One. Copy that now. Next step. Add delta X as you go down. Take your next y and put it there. That is a point you're going to plot. Second point. Lather, rinse, repeat. 
This is your new fact. It's like it's really fiction. Go to your slope generator and plug in the point, point 0.51. This slope only depends upon x, so you're only taking 2 and dividing it by, right, multiplying by 0.5 or dividing by half, and I get 1. Multiply 1 times my change in x. Take your old y, add your change in y, come up with your new y. But take your new y, add 0.5, take your new y, put it here, plot your point. Lather, rinse, and repeat. Go to the slope generator, plug in 1 comma 1.5. I actually only need the x. Multiply dy dx by dx, get 1. Take your old y, add your change in y, get your new y. Go back over to this column, add delta x, copy over your new y, lather, rinse, repeat. They asked me to do four steps. So this was the original, right? This was my fact. So that's not a step. I used Euler to get one, two, three, four approximations. I only have one fact, four approximations, four steps. When I connect those, it looks pretty unattractive, but can you see how close it is to the exact solution? Again, this is a very simple differential equation. Anti-differentiate both sides with respect to x, and you get x squared plus c. Plug in your initial condition, and you get c is equal to one. Therefore, the exact solution is y equals x squared plus 1. Plot that. And that doesn't look too bad. Can you see the shape, though? So imagine you didn't know how to solve a differential equation. I didn't need to integrate in order to get Euler's picture. All I needed was the derivatives. I used the derivative and the initial condition and tangent lines, right? Equation of tangent lines. Crazy. That's Euler's method. And of course, again, I get a better approximation, which I can program with a calculator or a computer if I use a very small delta x. And no matter how small delta x is, the minute you move away from your point here, your initial condition, you're still going to be off. And you're going to get further and further off as you move away from that point. That's not something you have to worry about. You will only be assessed on doing Euler's method given a delta x and so many steps. Okay. If the numbers get ugly, right? please, with your homework, feel free to use your calculator. Anytime we assess you, we will make sure that the numbers are nice if we take your calculator away from you. All right, I will see you in our next live session.